Okay, I think guys are uh, excited to go play. I'm ready to go to a very hostile environment versus a team that's undefeated at home. And, um, you know, we know they're going to throw everything at us, pull out all the stops. It's a huge game for them. So um, we'll, we'll continue to grind away and get ready to go play. How did the players handle the wet ball today? Yeah, they were good. You know, um, we, we've done it before uh, earlier in camp, you know, and uh, just making sure we revisit it again. And, ready for whatever happens. Lane, you talked about how Sark's changed a lot of his philosophy over the years. Is it something that you've noticed as kind of a sum total thing, or have you been studying elements even from last year, this year, and noticed he's already changing up some things? How do you prepare for that? Well, he's just gone a different style. I, I, I'm, I'm guessing, you know, and partly from conversations over off seasons with him, you know, that has to do with personnel. Um, he always wants to play to his personnel. and. You know, to, to a quarterback who moves around pretty good too, so they're a little bit more, have more of a spread element. You know, so, you know, it's a, that's what good coaches do. You know, they evolve to their personnel. Can you talk about how uh, last year you guys saw more top quarterbacks early in the year? Is there a certain number of quarterback, elite quarterbacks that you want to see before you find out how good your defense is? No, you know, we don't think of it that way. Um, you know, we just take one game at a time, and all teams present you different challenges. And every Saturday is different. You know, I've been saying it all year. Look no further than, than Stanford. You know, Stanford goes up to Washington, and you know, I think has about 200, 200 yards or something like that. And then comes back a week later and you know, lights it up. So, um, and on the other side of the ball, you know, Stanford all year basically shut down everybody, and all of a sudden they give up 600 or something. So, hey, you got to be ready every Saturday. And, and, Teams match up different versus certain teams. Is Keith Price the that elite quarterback that you're talking about? That yeah, he is. Um, you know, even though his stats don't show it this year, that's nothing to do with him. That's around him. You suffer those injuries like that. It's going to be difficult. You know, when your offensive line's changing, you lose a receiver, you lose two tailbacks. You know, that's not easy for any quarterback to deal with. He's the same quarterback, you know, that lit up the bowl game and, and set all the school records and completion percentage, touchdowns. You know, there's a lot of great quarterbacks to play there. He's, he's broken almost all the records. Do you expect Torin Harris to continue to start at this point? Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, we think Torin's going to continue to improve. You know, as we know, he missed a lot of time. And so hopefully, you know, this week he, sh he shows some improvement. Do you think your players are noticeably pressured two more days than they would be at this point if they the game on Saturday? I do. Um, I, I think our guys ha have really good legs right now. Um, you know, for us to be able to put tennis shoes on a walk through day, normally we can't afford to do that. But the extra time has done that. Um, our guys are really fast. And, uh, it feels like we've had, we've had a full buy, so uh, I think we've come out really fast. How does Josh Shaw's switch to cornerback affect Drew McCallis? Do you expect him to see more playing time? No, it doesn't affect Drew. We've already been rotating Drew in more. Um, he's been getting more snaps throughout the year, playing great for us on special teams and defense. So, yeah, I, I'm not sure I heard. So, will, is Torin going to start? Yes. You guys have kind of a lot of connections with you know, Seahawks and Pete and all that. Does that factor in this weekend in terms of any planning, you know, for the venue there? No, not at all. No. Um, no, Pete asked that question last night, but it wasn't last night. It's going to be tonight. <laughs> tonight. Yeah. Oh, okay. So they don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> Pete's radio show um, got suspended until tonight, so you'll hear it tonight. <laughs> he lost out to the Lakers. Um, <laughs> It, and it, he talked about that. Yeah, we know a lot of people on the staff up there, but you know, he said something about whoever they were playing, Patriots or whatever. He said, I didn't even know who they were playing. So, um, Coach Carroll, his staff's got a lot to do uh, outside of this game to prepare, and so do we. So, I mean, it's all business. When you and Sark were sharing the OC duties here, was there anything in particular that he did that that perhaps rubbed off on you or you adopted and you still hold on to to this day? Yeah, I think Sark did a great job on game day of managing the quarterback. You know, he was always downstairs, always always upstairs, and um, really, you know, wouldn't get rattled when things started going bad. And always, um, you know, would have great reminders for the guy. You know, right before the play, and um, that's why his quarterbacks have played so well over the years. In the early nineties, Washington kind of dominated the Purdue in Southern California when they were an elite team. Do you, does this game kind of more than others dictate how recruiting? No, uh, I don't. I don't think so at all. I think way too much is put into that. Whether we're winning a quote big game or or not, um, there's too much in that. I mean, you've got too many times over the years where we beat somebody, they still get a recruit, or we go beat them, and all of a sudden, you know, if we beat Notre Dame, all the recruits aren't coming to us, and none of them, and vice versa. The year that we lost to them, so um, I mean, it's all just a, a small part of the you know decision making.
is, uh, is DJ Morgan at the point now where he's a legitimate part of the running back rotation? Yes. Rather than just a kind of a reserve? Yeah, he is. Um, you know, I mean, you never know how the game is going to go itself, but we have great confidence that he's fully back and that he can do everything. He uh, knows all our stuff. And, uh, if need be, he can do it every down back. Um, as far as the fullbacks go, how has Julio Punter been progressing? We've seen him a bit more in games. Is that breaking into more of a regular rotation with Soma? Yeah, we're trying to get him some more snaps in there and, and take some off of Soma. Soma plays special teams as well, so does Julio. So um, both are freshmen, you know, very promising position. They have two freshmen that are playing a bunch of snaps for him. It's great. How analytical is Dion? That's a big word. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say he is that. <laughs> No, um, Dion really can understand everything, and he flops positions for us. It's very unusual of a guy to play in base and then play in nickel like he does. And um, he's really able to diagnose the stuff coming at him and play really fast. He made a huge interception yesterday because he had seen the play the day before. So he does a great job. Thank you.